Hello, my friends, and welcome to the latest spin. I'm Mike Spinner, Student Athlete World USA, and a happy Monday to all. Does it get any happier than Halloween? I know we're not there yet. We're the night before. We're all Hallows Eve Eve, if you will, but we're here. Like, I could taste the candy right now, okay? I love Halloween. I know I've said this before. If you're newer to, to my videos, um, Halloween to me is better than Christmas. Okay. Santa can, can mosey on down the road. I love Halloween. I would go out in costume if it were socially acceptable. Um, I just love this holiday. I love everything about it. I love having a son who's very particular about his candy, which leaves a lot to me. I have it all mapped out for tomorrow, people. He's going as a referee. I'm going as a hungry dad. We already have mapped out the uh, houses that give us the full-size candy bars. Does not get better than that. I just can't wait. Of everything about Halloween, I think it should be a federal holiday, but that's just me. So on to business, student athlete world business. First of all, we added some new travelers for our summer 2024 tours last week. Just want to welcome Caleb Raymond out of Florida. Daniel Asbury out of Florida, and Christian Coleman from the great state of New Jersey. Welcome officially to Student Athlete World. All three of you will be at the United World Games in June of 2024. That trip is filling in a hurry. Real excited to have you. And based on the way these interviews are going, that list is just going to grow and grow and grow. I've been meeting with a lot of amazing families. Um, it's our busiest time of year. Um, if you tried to set up an interview with me, you've noticed there's not a lot of times available. That's because I'm already I'm already booked, people. That's just how it works. Um, but certainly finish your applications, get your interviews going. Our rosters are quickly filling. You don't want to miss out on the tour that you want. The only way to make sure it happens, so repeat it at the end, get your application done, interview with me. But to our to our newcomers, welcome. Excited to have you. Um, I love seeing that list grow and, and the countdown's on. We're, we're heading towards the final stretch of 2023, which means our summer 2024 touring season is not too far away. And I'm certainly excited. Now, big announcement, women's lacrosse. If you're a women's lacrosse player and you are competing at Platinum Games this weekend in Flemington, New Jersey, we have a little prize for you. I will be there. Okay. I'm going to be coaching with Jersey Thunder, who I'm one of the directors of. I'll be coaching their 2024 team this weekend for sure. Okay. If you want a prize, I have a few prize items from my summer tour that I never quite gave away. I have a few items of swag left. Um, all you got to do is find me. I'll be wearing something that says Jersey Thunder. It will say Coach Spinner on it, so you cannot miss me. It will be something in black. And I always have a hat, probably a black hat. All you got to do is find me, introduce yourself. Hey, I, I saw you on the latest spin. Take a quick selfie for, for our social media vehicles, and you get yourself a prize. Get to me quickly. As long as I'm not literally coaching a game, come and see me, and I will make it happen. But there are enough prizes to have that go all day. So I'll be there Sunday. Come and find me. Have a little fun. Chat a little bit. Whether you are already touring with us, whether you're in the process of, of applying, if you see this video, you know I'm going to be there. Find me. We'll take it. We'll take a quick picture, and you you might walk away with the prize. I hope to see you there. Now, on to the sports world. Those New York Giants. I, I just don't know what to say. I do know what to say. Okay. When you have the ball deep in opposing territory, there are 24 seconds left in the game and the other team does not have timeouts left, and you're winning, you have to win the game, all right? It was fourth and one. The best player on your team on the offensive end is Saquon Barkley. Give him the football. It's one yard. It's three feet. It's like this. A little wider than that. I have a very wide camera. It's three feet. You just you go for it there. And what did Giants do on, a, on the, a windy, cold, wet day at Giant Stadium? They bring out a kicker who recently couldn't hit water if he was drowning. He misses, 
And then they make Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson, of all people, look like Tom Brady. 24 seconds, tie the game, win it in overtime against the Jets. No. Giants fans, it's over. Over and done with. I've been teasing it being over. It is officially over. It's done. It's on the 2024. This team stinks. And you know what I hate? I hate this the most. New York Talk Radio. And that's what, when I'm doing my administrative work for Student Athlete World between interviews, I listen to Sports Talk Radio. The number of people calling in today to be like, hey, they're playing their third string quarterback. What do you expect? No. Stop right there. Yeah, Chris DeVito, I mean, they could have had Dan DeVito as quarterback. It didn't matter. All right? Terrible. They threw for minus nine yards passing and still could have won the game. And there are people out there calling into New York Sports Talk Radio saying, that's like an accomplishment for the Giants. They didn't just fold and let the Jets walk over. No, they lost the game. It is an NFL football team that lost a game when they had the lead, 24 seconds left, the Jets had no more timeouts against their their neighbor the the team they shared the stadium and the headlines with you can't lose that game i don't care who was quarterback i don't care if i was quarterback give it to saquon barkley have him jump over the top of the line get that one year the three feet you needed to to ice the game and go celebrate the win but no you had to get all fancy try field goal in in the rain and the wind oh my god graham you know how's he still giant even right now okay gotta get struggling to play dead on Halloween, oh, am I angry? I'm, I'm more angry now than when the game ended because it doesn't matter that this was a third-string quarterback. The coaches had the game in their hand. I was a coach for most of my career. Now, am I comparing what I did to an NFL coach? No. What I'm saying, though, is the number one job of a coach, when the game is on the line, you make sure your best player out there is the one that has to make the magic happen. Yesterday, once Tyrod Taylor went down, it was Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley. In that case, game is on the line. You give it to the best player that you have. Not Graham Gano, Saquon Barkley. And they kick the field goal. You know, if you're if this were the Chicago Bulls, 1990s, winning shot, you need, you need someone to ice the game. Is there anyone but Michael Jordan to give it to? You had Sky Pippen, Horace Grant. You had some good players on that team, Hall of Famers. No, you give it to the best player you have. That is your job as a coach. All right, you figure out how to win the game, and when it's time to win the game, your best player is the one to do it. Not, not a kicker who can't kick. Oh, is that frustrating? That is coaching malpractice, people. And now for the New York football giants, they traded Leonard Williams today, which is a good trade. I say you trade Saquon, trade Graham Gano, really release him, whatever, find someone who could kick a ball, but it's over. I like this coaching staff, but a year ago, they go for it on fourth down and ice the game. I think Brian, Brian Dable has lost his nerve a little bit because it's been a rough season. Whatever it is, unacceptable. Season over. We're looking for the number one pick in the draft. Get a good quarterback. Move on. But, man, is that frustrating. Do that against the Falcons. You know, not, not, not against the Jets or an FC East team. You beat them. You win the game. Ugh. But I'm not going to let this ruin my mood because tomorrow is Halloween. Final note here. So as most people who I meet would know, and many of you, my viewers know, um, I worked in college athletics for 23 years before coming over to student athlete world. Um, and I, I love working in the sport enterprise. It's my passion. It's, it's my calling. Okay, and when people, everyone who works in sports does it for different reasons. I entered sports and I stayed in it. I'm still in it as far as I'm concerned because of when you have moments that transcend the game, all right? When you have bigger than sports, sporting habits or sports moments happen. Nelson Mandela has a great quote. I'm not going to read the whole quote because you know, we're running out of time here. But a great quote about how sports kind of transcends the world. If you, if you want to, ever want a great sports quote, Google Nelson Mandela sports quote, you find everywhere. But sports has the power to change the world is how it started. And that's how I believe in sports. So I only worked in Division Two and Division Three athletics because to me, Division Two and Division Three is really all about the opportunities. It's about giving young athletes that moment 
when they're bigger than than than, than just a game or just being on a team. You know, you score 40 points in a game at a division three level. No, maybe no one knows, but you and your team, but you have that moment the rest of your life as a team, you win a championship. You have that moment forever. That's what I love about sports. I love about working in sports. Student athlete world. When I connect with a family and they decide to, to join our tour and send their, their child to an international sporting event. And it's the biggest thing that ever happened to them. That's why I love working in sports. That's why I love this job. And, and having a chance to go to United World Game this year and see them, you know, see it all in person. It really was special. And that's what I really love about what I do. Um, and my most recent example. So yesterday, my alma mater, Pace University, where I also coach, um, played my favorite college basketball team in an exhibition game, St. John's University. That's Rick Pitino's St. John's um, University team. And Pace went out and beat him. Now, granted, it was an exhibition game, so it wasn't a full regulation game, but Pace University, Division II, beat Rick Pitino's St. John's team, which is a darn good team this year. Beat them in, 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 you know, beat them pretty good. And it's, it's just so awesome. Those guys on the Pace team, by the way, congratulations, Matt Healy, my friend, great coach. Man, that program keeps plugging along. I'm so happy for you. But those guys on the Pace University men's basketball team, they're going to have that memory. You know, they, they went to Carnesecca Hall, beat Rick Pitino's team. That is something I'll never forget. And that's what I love about sports. So anyway, big story from this weekend. Um, as we all know, last week, there was a major tragedy in the state of Maine. I consider myself to be a surrogate in Mainer. My dad's lived in Maine, just near Portland for uh, 20, better than 25 years now. Um, and what happened in Lewiston is obviously a human tragedy um, that, that we just can't comprehend, right? And um, so Friday night, uh, the University of Maine, and, and you didn't hear about this, probably didn't hear about this, but it's just an amazing story. University of Maine men's ice hockey team went down to Quinnipiac, which is right near where I live in Connecticut. Um, Quinnipiac's men's ice hockey team won the national championship last year. Um, and it was their first national championship. I'm a huge hockey fan. Um, I've been to many games at Quinnipiac. It is a really, really tough arena to go and win. It's a, just a tough place to play. And University of Maine, they're, they're not the powerhouse that they used to be. But on Friday night, they went into Quinnipiac's building and they beat them. And I don't know why this wasn't a bigger story, but I'm like, I wasn't at the game. Um, but I, in my mind, like, you know, I got the chills a little bit just thinking about, like, this team at the state of Maine's flagship university, a team that was probably very heavy underdogs going into that game Friday, they went out and beat the defending champs in overtime. Great game. And you just, it's one of those things where is the state of Maine going to heal because this? The answer is no. But for one night, it was like, you know, this team carried their own state on their back. And they won a huge game during one of the worst weeks in the history of the state, one of the worst times. Um, and yeah, it doesn't make the tragedy disappear, but it just makes you feel real good that these kids were playing for something bigger than a hockey game. And boy, they come through. What a special win for those guys. And it just, just made me think about, you know, my place in the sport world, my career, my job, and, you know, this amazing job I have now that, you know, what we do is bigger than sports because most of you who I meet with, more than 50%, more than 75%, I've never left the country before, let alone traveled the world. And we give you the opportunity to do something so much bigger than sport in your life. And so whenever I see a real, a, another real world sports story that's just bigger than a game, bigger than sports, it really moves me. So I was very moved by the University of Maine men's ice hockey team and what they did Friday night. And uh, as an aside, you know, if you're looking for a new sport to pick up and watch, college ice hockey is just tremendous. Um, I'm a division one season ticket holder, Sacred Heart University. And it's just, there's something really unique and special about college ice hockey in general. And this was one great story. So I figured I'd share it, especially ending on a happy note because the New York Giants gave me nothing happy for this week. And I don't think there's anything happy coming anytime soon. But that's all I have for this week. I hope everyone has a wonderful Halloween. If you have any extra candy you want to send it my way, I know exactly what to do with it. Until next Monday, remember, only one way to join Student Athlete World. Start your application, complete it, schedule an interview with me, and pack your bags. See everyone next Monday. Have a great week.